Take a good long look at this giant ass level. This level requires you to jump upon 8 Goombas suspended in the air to avoid falling in the lava and dying. Look at the things written in the blocks telling you that pipe A is the wrong pipe and pipe B is the correct one. With this insider information, why would anybody even think to go to the pipe labeled A, whose path is riddled with one-hit kills from lava and a ludicrous amount of airborne Goombas all suspended several feet off the ground, when Pipe B has next to no hazards at all? And why oh why does it kill you anyway even when you choose the correct pipe and see the fireworks go off? What kind of monstrous, horrible, evil, stupid, moronic, idiot bastard could design such a disgraceful, dysfunctional piece of garbage. Well, me, actually. I have been talking all kinds of mad shit on all kinds of games from independently produced fan-made ROM hacks all the way up to the top of the AAA crap pile. I have been largely fair a lot of the time, at least I think, maybe a little unfair on some other occasions, but such is the way of the critic. That being said, I am aware that the work of a critic is easy. We risk very little and enjoy a position over others who offer up their work and themselves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is very fun to write and to read. Hideo Kojima himself said it slurped anal grease through a warthog's dickhole. But at the end of the day, the bitter truth that we critics must face is that the average piece of junk is probably more meaningful than our words designating it so. Ratatouille, 2007. In light of my increasing enlightenment on these matters, I have made a decision to do something special this Christmas. I'm gonna show you something that I never thought I would show to anybody. I am going to show you all the Mario fan game that I made all the way back in the summer of 2010 when I was 12 years old. For a little bit of background on this, while I was growing up, my parents were not at all big on the idea of me spending my summer break enjoying my life by playing video games and watching watching the same Smosh videos on YouTube over and over again. So they decided to sign me up for this summer class at this community center where I would learn some of the basics of game design using whatever version of Game Maker was out at the time. Over the course of two weeks, me, with a shitload of help from this dude who was two years older than me give or take and had really long hair, cobbled together my magnum opus and my entrance into the world of game design and it's the worst shit I've ever played. Now since I was just a junior game designer who didn't quite know the ropes yet, I decided to make a 2D platformer inspired by the old Mario games. By which I mean I downloaded all the assets from Google Images and slapped them all over the place like a crazy person. Just look at this beautiful title screen. Super Mario Flash. That's what I called it. I don't know why, it doesn't even run on Flash. The actual game file is called MarioGame.exe, so right off the bat I was having some issues figuring out what I was going to call this thing. Now you have to understand that this is not a scrolling platformer because the world doesn't scroll. This is actually a game where you can see the entire level before you even begin. So there is absolutely no mystery to anything and it pretty much sucks any ounce of dynamic decision making out of the equation because you instantaneously know which route is actually the good one. The only enemies are Goombas which all run back and forth and can be killed by jumping on them except you have to do it extremely carefully because if you're one pixel off it'll actually kill you. Yeah, that's fair. Ooh, look at this, once you reach level 4 the entire game window resizes because I made the level even bigger. Look at all these coins in these very clearly dangerous as fuck areas where one wrong move will instantly kill you and force you to start over. What's the point of the coins anyway? All they do is add to your high score. Check out that scoreboard. Chalk one up for dick shit McGee. Check out these Goombas running around in the sky because I forgot to put a barrier to stop them from doing that and also there's no gravity system so pretty much every Goomba in this game is just floating on top of whatever is there. And check out Mario going through the pipe except he isn't going through the pipe. He's walking in front of the pipe off screen because he doesn't need no pipe. 
And what's up with the background? This is just two big ass blue rectangles. Then you got level 5. Look at these blocks going all the way up to this pipe with a measly handful of coins on them. You can't even use this to beat the level because there's lava there. The key to good game design is to understand what the player is thinking at any given moment. Which is why I put a billion coins up here on this bullshit bed of lava with a bunch of little scuffed as fuck platforms and try to lure the player with coins. Seriously though, who the hell did I think I was fooling with that? Level 6 is probably one of the more creative levels I made. You have this Kaizo level bullshit where you have to jump on these suspended Goombas to get over the lava. And the best part is that if you die, they don't come back, which means you're screwed for the entire game and have to start all the way over again. What can I say? I think I pretty much made the Dark Souls of Mario fan games. The absolute worst part about this level is that even if you do make it to the pipe and win, you respawn up here and die anyway. Then it keeps happening until either you run out of lives or it loads the next level. That's worse than anything I could have dreamed up today. If by some miracle it loads the next level before you lose all your lives, you will discover the biggest clusterfuck nonsensical abomination of level design you will ever see. Trust me, you are not ready for this. Level 7 it's a tornado of airborne Goombas and a pipe all the way down here with lava on both sides. This is the worst thing I have ever seen. I created this and I don't even have a clue what the fuck I was thinking. Probably my greatest achievement with this game is the fact that there aren't any sound effects. The only audio in this game is music from Super Mario 64 that I downloaded with some online MP3 converter that probably doesn't exist anymore. Ooh, check this out. If you jump at a wall and start moving towards it, Mario starts humping it like a madman. <laughs> Yeah, I know that's a little juvenile, but you gotta understand, I made this when I was 12, so I'm just trying to paint a picture here. Some of the blocks aren't even really there, there's all kinds of weird collision detection. The only really impressive thing is the effect of the breaking blocks, and that wasn't even me. That was the programmer dude who helped run the thing. So, in case anyone was watching my ROM hack reviews and said, why don't you make a game yourself then? Well there you go, I did it. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's amazing. My methods are beyond your comprehension and understanding. Well, another marathon has come and gone. It was a lot of work, and it was honestly a lot of fun. I played a lot of fantastic games and one really, really bad one. This was my first and currently only outing as a game designer. Perhaps it's best that it stay that way. Or perhaps I should take another crack at it sometime. Maybe even next year. I guess we'll see. In any case, I want to thank you all for the support, especially in this last month with this marathon. You guys have been very receptive and fantastic and I cannot overstate my gratitude. I am sorry that I didn't review everyone's recommendations this month, but in all likelihood, I will get to it eventually. The suggestions made it a lot easier to pull this thing off and I gotta say thanks for that. Last year I ended the marathon with Mother 3 and obviously this is nowhere near as climactic and exciting as that, but I thought it would be interesting to let you in on that little bit of Phantom Beano lore, and also to remind myself how important it is to stay humble. But it's Christmas, I'm sure a lot of you have families and friends and presents and turkey and hot chocolate to attend to, so I won't waste any more of your time. So thank you very much for your continued support, Merry Christmas, and to all, a really fucking good night. The best night of your life. Ho ho ho.